Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. In today's video guys, we'll be working here on that Porsche Cayenne and uh, we'll show you guys how to how to remove and replace water pump on that thing. Now, let me introduce you quick that we have more than 200 videos on this car. So even if you have a V6, V8 engines, we'll have videos for both of you guys. So please subscribe to the channel for quite a few videos. We'll have more than 200 videos on this thing. Now, we'll demonstrate how to remove and replace the water pump on this 4.5 engine. So, uh, it will require some work. Stay with us, we'll do that. We already removed the dust covers that will be on the channel. You can check out the video if you need help with that. It's pretty simple, but if you need help, just check it out. So, let's go ahead and start on it. All the tools and parts that we use will be listed in the description of the video below. So, now we need a Torx 30 bit. Okay, this is a Torx 30 bit. Uh, and let me explain how you remove okay, those plastic bolts here and uh, the one on the uh, also on the airbox right there. Now, most people will break those and I'll show you how. And you will not even suspect that yours were broken probably. So, as you can see, okay, on top of this bolt right here, okay, there is one dot. Okay, this dot right here. So this dot, guys, okay, needs to face this way in order to be able to pull it out. Usually, when they're locked in place, it will be placed like that, opposite. Then you have to turn it this way, okay, to, okay, you can see that white thing of the plastic, the where it's a little bit wider than the rest of it, that's where it needs to face. The same will apply to this one here. Okay, and uh, for this one, the easiest thing will be to actually, okay, disconnect the throttle body cable here. Okay, so it's not in the way. I'll leave it like that. And uh, you can see it's already where it's supposed to be. When it's locked, it's like that. And now we need to bring that dot here to the white part and see what will happen. Now stay with us to show you about the airbox because that's a very trick uh, situation too. Now there is one tube on the bottom side that goes in that white opening. Now that tube will break if people are not careful. So you need to make sure everything aligns. And after that, all you have to do, okay, grab it, okay, with the pliers and just pull it straight out without twisting. Okay, our tooth is broken. That's where it was supposed to be. It's not there anymore because somebody messed it up. Now, the same thing with you to this side here. Okay. This one got stuck a little bit, so let me make sure that it's situated where it's supposed to be. Okay, I see that uh, thing actually on the bottom, that tooth, that it's bent. So somebody tried to pull it out the wrong way, and now that's going to cost us a little bit, because it will be, it will be stuck. So in our case, I'll have to move it a little bit left or right until it goes in the canal, okay? And it came out. Okay, you can see this tooth, half of it is still good. Half is not. So you need, you need to make sure that this little bitty tooth, okay, right here, guys, check it out. This little bitty thing goes in this canal right here. You can see how we have the two canals. Otherwise, you will not be able to pull it out. Now, the same thing to the airbox right here, but a little bit different uh, location. Now, you can see when they're locked in place, that's how they face forward. Now we need to bring that dot, okay, here, to match this dot on the back side, okay, over here. So we'll just turn it, okay, like that, and the same thing to this one here. Perfect. Now let me see if I can pull those guys out now. Now, okay. Check out the tooth on the bottom. This one is still good. And one more on this side. Okay, need to situate it exactly where it needs to go. If it doesn't come out, 
Okay, don't break it. You need to move it a little bit. Something's not aligning. Okay, so eventually, okay, it comes out. Okay, this is uh, this is this one here as well. Now, need to go to this side now. Okay, and we need to do the same thing. Now you can see the dots are on the back side. Okay, right here. So I'll turn them to align this with the dot there. And this with that dot. Okay, we'll need to go ahead and pull them out now. Okay, this one came out easy. One of them always always tend to get stuck for some reason. Okay, so this one came out too. You can check it out here now. How you disconnect the mass airflow sensors? Okay, now right here that connector. First step will be push it in. Okay, you need to push it in so we you release the press pressure right here on that tube. And after that while you're pushing in, push that tube back and pull it out guys. You can see the tube is inside right here. Same thing to this side but the tube is on the bottom so you cannot see it so good. Okay but that's what we do. And now Okay, we have one vacuum hose underneath that we need to disconnect here. You just squish, okay, let me explain it here quick. Come, come to show you with the camera. On that vacuum hose right here, you need to squish those two things in and pull it out. Okay, just like that. All right, guys, with the intake out of the way now, I want to show you, okay, why we removed it? Because ours does not have a drain plug and we'll need to access that hose there. If your Porsche does have a drain plug, you do not need to remove the intake. Uh, and even if you don't have an, a drain plug, you still don't have to, but you minimize the risk of breaking your radiator and that hose because you have more room to work on, on the part and uh, the intake takes only like two minutes to remove it. So let me get underneath and show you if you have a drain plug where it will be located. Okay, so you can see on this part of the radiator, okay, right here, okay, right here, that's the transmission lines, right next to them, you will have a green or blue drain plug. Ours, okay, we don't have it. You can see just aluminum radiator. So we will have to drain it through the lower holes. Okay, and the procedure for bleeding later, it's quite complicated, so you need to double check on the channel to make sure that we do everything correct. So, okay, let me show you. I'm trying to see from here. Okay, this is the hose. This is the lower hose. And there is one metal clip that we'll need to bring up with a screwdriver. We'll need to just pull it straight up. And then we'll need to move the hose out, but we'll need to have a container to catch all the coolant. And you need to put new coolant because you'll contaminate this one. Okay, so that's how we guys drain the coolant. So let's start on it now. So I'll get a flat head screwdriver, a little one like that. Okay, and I'll come on this side. Okay, like that. Okay, let's see if that is too big of a screwdriver. Yeah, that's too thick. Let me get a thinner one to it to start it. Okay, like that. You don't have to remove the spring all the way. It has one a certain position where it stops. If you want to, you can remove it, but later you need to align everything and install it. Now, you just need to wiggle it gently a little bit. You cannot turn it because it has a... Okay, it has a tube that goes in, so you can just pull it straight out.
Okay oh, guys, coolant's coming out. So, you can see, quite a bit of a mess. We're going to let it drain for a long time. So, for the belt, pulleys or anything like that, you do not need to remove the fan. In our case, we will, so we can stick the camera in a better angle and we can show you better and we can reach easier. Now, the fan takes only like probably two minutes to five minutes to remove it, so that's what we will be doing. It's your choice if you want to do that or not. So, let's start on it now. So, now, in order to remove the belt, okay, right here, you can see, okay, let me get that hose out of the way. You can see that metal thing that's made to be cut with a wrench. Okay, I'm trying to focus. Uh, it's the one for the tensioner pulley, right there. So we don't have a wrench exactly that size, but we have the crescent wrench right here. And we need to go clockwise to get the belt loose. Okay, remember now, clockwise. Okay, and check out how loose the belt gets. Never stick your finger between belt and moving parts. Okay, get it out. And now release. Okay, and the pulley will go back. And you can see, now we can go ahead and remove the belt out of the way. It's a double-sided belt. Okay, we need to pull it one way or the other because here it's the uh, oil dipstick. Okay, now it's cut on the bottom. On the crankshaft pulley. Again, it's on the crankshaft pulley now. So let's pull it out. You can see how long that thing is. Incredibly long. So careful not to damage anything in the way. You have to gently remove it. Okay, perfect guys, and this is the serpentine belt out of the way. Okay guys, so now, if you want to remove the water pump only, what you will have to do, this pulley will need to come out, this is Torx 40, we'll get them loose in a minute. But, once you remove that thing, you can reach the bolts for the water pump and remove the water pump only. In our case, okay, we are not uh, going to do that right now because we'll put new thermostat as well. And the new thermostat guys, uh, we'll have to take the intake apart, uh, the intake manifold and all that stuff, so uh, we'll go the long route. Okay, if you wanna skip that, just uh, stay with us, we'll show you how to remove that pulley and all the bolts for the water pump will be underneath. So let's start on it now. So the water pump pulley bolts, if, uh, if you hold them with two hands, okay, that pulley with T40, Torx 40, you can go ahead and get the bolts loose. Okay. One person holding it with two hands and one taking them off usually works out good, but careful not to smash your finger somewhere because that could happen. And you can actually do that while the belt is on. So it will help you more. Okay, we didn't think about it, to be honest with you. So we'll go ahead and remove the three bolts now all the way. Okay, I'm working on the second one now. Third one out. Okay, let's see if the pulley is going to come out now. It will be probably stuck a little bit in there. Okay, so now we will get a little bit of a prying bar, but you have to be very gentle, don't push too much, and wiggle it a little bit. Okay, so, okay, hopefully it will come out. Okay, it's coming out little by little, but it's stuck, okay, pretty, pretty good. Okay, almost, it's almost, almost out.
Okay, this is it. A little bit stuck here, but that's fine. So those are the eight bolts now. If you want to remove those, you can pull the pump out. But we're going to go the long route. Okay, so now uh, with all the things out of the way, we can show you where all the bolts are for the water pump so you can see better. That's why we need to make more room. But uh, you don't have to remove all that stuff. I told you again, we just uh, want to put new thermostat as well. So if you want to see that video, check it out. So I think total we have eight bolts holding the water pump now. We should have a gasket there as well. Okay, stay with us until the end to see exactly how many there are because we want to make sure that we tell you the right amount of bolts so you know what to expect. So this should be the last one there. So it's quite complicated, complicated engine as you can see. Okay, more coolant came out and the water pump is out of here now. You can see just like that. So this is the new water pump guys, we got it today. Uh, you can check out where we got ours from. Uh, we ordered actually a thermostat as well, uh, the water pump and the gasket here as well. This is a new gasket, so that's, uh, that's amazing. Always put new gasket uh, when you replace the water pump. The bolts, you can see they have that blue coating. This is thread locker, so we'll need to uh, apply some thread locker. Okay, we have one right here, so that's what we will be doing and uh, we'll get all bolts tight now. Usually we go in a cross pattern, like one here, there, then down, kind of like cross pattern. And uh, we recommend to use the torque wrench. It needs to be set at 10, okay, 10 Newton meters for every bolt on the water pump. Okay, so we'll go ahead, install the pump now. Everything needs to be super clean before we apply the gasket. Remember that, okay, you need to align it. And push it in. Perfect. Okay. I'll hold it like that until one person just puts the bolts. Don't forget to apply thread locker on all of them. Okay, perfect. Just like that. And now we'll need to put each one of them here. The one on top. Okay, has that holder for the wires there. And we'll put all the bolts and start getting them tight. So uh, currently we do not have the torque range because uh, we just messed it up. Okay, but uh, you have to go 10 Newton meters. Okay, and we go one on top, one on bottom, and then we go sides, alternate, so cross pattern. From that point on guys, putting everything together will be in reverse order. Okay. Uh, we took here everything apart for the coolant pipes to replace as well But if you're just doing the pump uh, You don't have to worry about all that stuff 
Okay, also there is a special procedure to bleed the cooling system. It's under vacuum. That's how you bleed it under vacuum. But uh, we will try to attempt to do it without any special tools. Something that I will not recommend. But check out the video if you want to see if it will work out in our case or not. There is no guarantee that it will work for you. So. Thank you guys for watching, please hit that subscribe button for more videos and see you guys next time.